If you can grow grass in Kansas City, you can grow grass anywhere in this United States. I guarantee it. I'm Travis Hogan. I'm the head groundskeeper here at Arrowhead Stadium, and we use Northbridge Bermuda. I'm Casey Montgomery, Director of Turf Operations for Sporting Kansas City, and we have Tiffway 419. Hi, I'm Trevor Vance from the Kansas City Raws, and I have a blend of bluegrasses. We have four blends of bluegrass, Noble, Bewitched, Hampton, and Fullback. I'm a big fan of having a variety. I don't want a mono stand because I don't want to commit to one, because then if one fails, you fail. So hopefully, if, by having four of them out here, if one of them fails, you're still batting, you know, 750, you still got a chance. So I've always been a big fan of having a blend of bluegrasses. We have Northbridge Bermuda, and uh, we switched to it in 2013. We were 419 for years. The biggest thing with Northbridge was it was the highest dormant traffic tolerant Bermuda choice at the time, and it's held up awesome for us. Here at Sporting Kansas City, we have 419 on our stadium field and we have roughly 20 acres of Northridge Bermuda at our two other training facilities. 419 is kind of the godfather of all the new age Bermudas. The recovery time and the healing ability of the 419 and of the Northridge is huge. The USGA has done so much research and development over the years that's really kind of led us to where we are today. There's no agency or organization, federal, NGO or otherwise that has done what the USGA has done for turfgrass research. Over the last hundred years, the USGA has invested more than $40 million in turfgrass and environmental research that has resulted in new cultivars of grass that use resources more efficiently and provide better playing conditions. The USGA Turf and Environmental Research Committee has been involved with universities since the 1980s. We have had just countless graduate students that have been funded through the USGA, and at the end of the day, that's one of our ultimate missions, is to train future scientists. They're the biggest funder of turfgrass research worldwide. So without them, I mean, I don't know where we would be as an industry. If you think about the grasses that they've worked on developing, funding, Bermuda grass and zoysia grass and buffalo grass. When it comes to turfgrass research, most people think it's only golf, uh, but that couldn't be further from the point. In fact, we have a saying, you know, from your house to the White House. We've got better turf and home lawns. We have better turf on sports fields. And it's not just in this country. The research that was sponsored here has actually contributed to what is grown throughout the world. Just their development of past bailing back in the late 90s. The Atlanta Braves play on it. The Florida Marlins play on it. The Houston Astros play on it. And World Cup soccer is going to be played on 2022 may not realize just how much they're relying on turf grass research when they walk into a big box store and pick up a, a bag of grass seed. That grass seed has gone through tremendous improvements over the past three or four decades. And what they can buy today is because of all the research that's been funded by the USJ. Although they've got the golf uh, moniker, uh, USGA, what they've done has provided support across the industry, whether it be uh, sports turf management, lawn and landscape. I mean, it expands throughout the entire turf industry. The USGA Greens Construction, it's one that has been used for an awful long time. And, you know, most football fields, baseball fields, golf course greens are all built, you know, with that similar construction. Our construction here is similar to a USGA green. We have 10-inch sand cap. It helps with drainage. It helps with infiltration. Well, I think there's a lot of similarities. I mean, we're all growing grass. You know, golf course superintendents, they're growing grasses at heights that we don't even think about here. We're basically doing the same thing, just over a different area and different heights of cut. We're in the transitional zone here in Kansas City. It's one of the most difficult places to successfully grow grass all year round. I mean, we get as hot as Texas, cold as Minnesota. There's not very many places that you can hit minus eight and 108 in the same year maybe in a four or five month span. We're playing through all the seasons, so we need to have the field ready for spring, for summer, late summer when it's miserable hot and heading into fall. And then it's still transitioning back to winter to get it ready for February. When it says a noon kickoff, it doesn't matter if it's 90 and sunny or if it's 
five degrees and snowing that they're going to kick off at noon. And you do everything that you can through the week to grow it as well as you can, and then whenever noon rolls around, whatever you got, you got. My most concern about safety and playability, first and foremost for the players. Everything that we do is geared toward player safety. You got owners that are investing 100 to 200 million dollars in payroll, and they're trusting me that that player that they're paying to go out there and play and not get hurt. So that is the utmost importance is player safety. But when it comes to playability, you want it to be consistent. Whatever you provide that third baseman day one, when it's 40 degrees far high, you better be able to provide them in August when it's 120 degrees. Because that's what they're after. They want consistency and knowing it's going to play the same every day. After that is aesthetics. You know, we pride ourselves on aesthetics too, but it's not as important to us as safety and playability. The first thing for me is a good, safe playing surface. If it looks pretty for that, then that's great. If there's times it doesn't, but it's a good, safe field, then obviously that's the biggest goal. I'm proud of the whole thing. I'm proud of the whole stadium. But I like, we have our thumbprint on this game every day. We want the fans to walk in. We want the wives to nudge their husbands and say, why doesn't our yard look like that? And then we want the field to become a backdrop kind of like a good umpire. You know he's out there, but he doesn't come into play. That's what we want the field to do.